You're listening to live and local conversation on Talk Radio 600 WBOB. The lines are open. Dial 854-1320. Now let's return to Cindy Graves, politics, business, and mayhem. President Obama's landmark health care reform law. A Supreme Court ruling being heralded as the most important since Bush versus Gore in 2000. So the bottom line here is the Supreme Court has upheld the health care law. In a few months, Americans will cast their ballots and make a choice. Do we continue on a path of rising, out-of-control health care costs? Do we continue with massive tax increases to fund a new $2 trillion program? Do we continue stifling our economy with a growing government that discourages hiring? Or do we chart a new course and change directions? The Supreme Court may have made their decision, but the American people haven't. It's to make sure that the next president of the United States repeals Obamacare and replaces Obamacare. Day one, job one, repeal Obamacare. From Mitt Romney's mouth to God's ears, I hope I'm here with Representative Doc Renuart, who knows a thing or two about medicine as he is a practicing physician, as well as I'm a representative in the Florida legislature. And I am joined by my great friend, Robbie Foster, um, formerly the UNF president of the College Republicans and currently an entrepreneur that knows a few things about political data. Welcome, Robbie. Thank you. Great to be here, Cindy. Now, tell us the name of your company real quick. Uh, it's TWG Technologies. We're a political software company. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk today. We, we, we had a, we are having kind of a double booking, but we're thrilled to be able to have Doc Renuart here with us. Representative Renuart, you are a physician. What do you think about this Obamacare mess? Oh, thank you, Cindy. Well, certainly I'm, I'm disappointed uh, in the decision from the Supreme Court uh, a week ago today. Um, but really, the Supreme Court called it what it is. It's the largest tax increase in the history of the United States. And and uh, this program really taxes hardworking uh, uh, citizens who pay for insurance that they may not need or want. And it really subsidizes the cost for others who are, who are otherwise exempt. Um, but this is a huge financial burden that also places on the states and part of the state government. This is one of my main concern. Uh, the well, current, this, because of the yeah, Medicare. Yeah, the Medi- Medicaid. Medicaid. Medicaid program in the state, yes. So are, can we afford this Medicaid bill that they're trying to propose to us? Not with the proposed changes because they're wanting to not quite double the number of people that are eligible, but pretty close. And currently it costs us uh, just shy of $30 billion, which is almost a third of our, our I mean, sorry, it's 20, 20 some billion dollars, and it's about a third of the state budget. And uh, uh, with the expansion, even with the 67% match from the federal government, we can expect to pay probably about another $1.4 billion on top of our current expenses. My word, well, how could anyone pay for that? Well, that's what a lot of states are, are sitting and looking at. And these are people who have otherwise not relied on the Medicaid program for their care. So we're trying to provide this to people who have been getting care otherwise. And it's going to remove services from those who are relying on the Medicaid program. Uh, those who are disabled, those who are nursing homes, and those who are, are seriously ill and impoverished. There's only so much money, so we have to, you know, balance it out uh, to make sure that the people are cared for. Well, especially there's only so much money in the state of Florida since we don't print money here as they do in Washington. <laughs> right. Now, tell me, Robbie, are, are you insured? What, 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 you're a young man. You're probably not expecting to have a heart attack anytime soon. How does Obamacare affect you? Well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not insured and I don't want health insurance. I'm 28 years old. I'm incredibly healthy and I don't, I don't need insurance. I don't, I'm one of the, I don't go to the doctor, but now I'm going to have to either get it or be penalized with this tax. And of course they the way they've structured it is all the good is happening now and all the bad is going to happen down the line. And, um, I'm just glad that we have, um, educated people like a physician, Doc Renuart, in the House, because we need people over in Tallahassee who are going to stand with the governor and tell Washington, no, you're not going to dictate to Florida what we're going to do. So, so Doc Renuart, you, Representative Renuart, you do agree with the governor's stance then in telling the federal government that he is not going to partake in Obamacare? 
Well, it's certainly a reasonable stance at this point, just looking at the numbers. I mean, we just cannot make those numbers happen. And I am actually the only physician in all the state government that's eligible for reelection. We had two, and the other physician is term limited. So there's not that many health care experts in Tallahassee, which makes some of this very challenging. Um, but the, the bill itself was well-intentioned to provide more access to care. At least that's what a lot of people voted for it. But obviously it's, it's kind of morphed into something much greater. And that's what, because we passed it before we read it. Well, yes. <laughs> and, and what a lot of people don't realize is those who are on the Medicare program and TRICARE, it's going to shift money from those programs, too, at the federal level uh, to pay for these state program expansions. Uh, so there's going to be less services for those who are using those programs, too. Well, it's also going to be change the write-off status that you have for medical bills. It's also going to be taxing certain products that we buy if, if you have an infirmed mom or, or, or relative that has to have equipment in their home instead of going to a nursing care. I mean, all those things are going to be taxed in a way they weren't taxed before, are they not? Yes, and, and there, there's great greater uh, restrictions on employers. And you're going to see a lot of employers maybe letting go some of those um, employees that they can't support if they're required to provide this this level of care or they're going to be paying the penalty and the more employees they have the greater the penalties are uh, so this may be a job killer uh, and it may affect us the economy here in the state of florida even further well and so d- when do you think that we'll know and understand everything that's in this bill and what the ramifications are for the state of florida do you think we're just going to wait until november and just roll the dice or do we have a plan <laughs> well the bill has been looked at and the, the the state legislature has looked at and seen what things we would be at that time thought we'd be required to implement um, but with the supreme court's decision it's not as mandatory as it, it was originally billed so we do have some uh, powers under the the tenth amendment that uh, gives the state control of, of essentially telling the federal government we do not agree with this program where we're not going to implement certain parts of it, such as the Medicaid expansion. Well, the, the 10th Amendment doesn't seem to be working real well in Washington generally, <laughs> it's when still, you, especially if you're from Arizona. It's so, still our amendment. <laughs> that's right. We it still is our it, amendment. Yes. Well, so tell us, how is your campaign going? You were running for re-election. You drew some challengers, again, because of all this redistricting mess. Right. People started filing for office to run for their imaginary seat, not even knowing where they'd be. And your seat shifted quite a bit down well, south. Yeah, redistricting affected me in, in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm very excited to represent more of St. John's County, which is my home county. But my previous district got cut into four pieces. I ended up with the, the biggest piece. And I have about a third of my current constituents, but two-thirds of the constituents in this area, this new district, is is, – they're new to me. And unfortunately, uh, there was an open district that was supposed to be south of mine where Representative Bill Proctor had been term limited. And three people had signed up for that seat, uh, running against each other for about a year and a half, and uh, they all got drawn into this district. So y'all all all landed in the same same pot of soup. Well, yeah. Rob – Robbie Foster is here, and he is talking. To, he came to talk with us too about his company, um, which is called TWG, and it is a special software company and data collection. So you make campaigns easier. Tell us. We do. What? Well, one of the things uh, our overall goal is to make the campaign uh, more efficient, quicker, and easier to run. The software is completely cloud-based, which means you can access it from um, any any computer, any laptop, and any smartphone. And one of the great things that we do is when you are have a district where you haven't met two thirds of the people yet for Doc Renuart, you go you can go out with your smartphone and you can walk those neighborhoods and meet those people because all of our data is synced up with the uh, Department of State Division of Elections in Tallahassee and everything is real time. So what's the difference between this and the I elect? I mean, is it I is it web ele- web elect that, that that Lenny Curry and the Republican Party of Florida would provide to us for free if we were a candidate? Uh, the biggest difference for us is our data is better, our data is more accurate, everything is retained because it is cloud based. So in two years, when Doc's up for re-election again, he's going to have all the data from this from the uh, previous election. Nothing is ever lost as it is with some of our competitors. Well, that's exciting, Doc. Tell us how how can we get involved with your campaign? Well, we're doing very frequent walks throughout the whole district, which includes all of St. Augustine, St. Augustine Beach, Julington Creek, and Fruit Cove, and Switzerland, and uh, a lot of the rural St. John's County. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with my campaign, it's area code 904 904- 
945-9940. Please give us a call. That was Doc Renuart. My other special co-host is going to come back and talk to us more about campaigns is Robbie Foster. I'm Cindy Graves. I thank you for spending your lunch hour with us here on WBOB. And we'll be back tomorrow with another exciting show, including the National Wrap-Up with Neil Freeman, formerly of the National Review. We sure do appreciate you. Get out there and go.